So in practical terms, having seen your general practitioner, there'll be a bit of a wait until you see, get the referral to a ge genetic counsellor, which is usually in a, in a hospital. You go and see the genetic counsellor who would check that you knew what you were deciding, that you had all the information you needed, and then you would be given some time, typically a few months, where uh, you have time to make sure that you're sure that's what you want to do. And if you are sure, then you go back and you have a blood test, that then gets sent off for a result, and you then come back and get given your result. So that would be the GP, and then three visits with a genetic counsellor, with a genetic service, at the end of which you would know whether you are carrying the gene or not. In terms of who can quite reasonably and, 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 and appropriately go and get uh, genetic uh, counselling and can ask for that from via, uh, for referral from their general practitioner on the NHS, you have to be an adult, so you have to be 18 in order to do that. And usually a general practitioner will want to check that that's what you really want, want to do before refer, referring on. But thereafter, it, it would be the genetic counsellor who would be the person who would be discussing with you whether or not you want to take it forward and making sure that you were, um, had, had considered the issue, that you were properly informed and, and in the right place and frame of mind to, ha to have, a, have that test. And that is your, that, 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 that should be your right. Conversations vary with different people's interests about and, and, what, and their motivations for a test. But, but important things that are covered in those processes include, uh, are you sure you want to know? That you understand the implications for you, for other members of your family. That if you've got any legal questions, whether or not you're concerned about the implications for insurance or for employment, those are often covered as well. And then typically the process, the details of how the process would go forward and what support would be available thereafter is also dealt with. Uh, so typically the process from first referral, having seen your GP and they refer you on to genetic counsellor, the, the process would typically take six months or a bit longer. Of course it can take much longer than that if you decide you don't want to take any one of those steps further or if there's another uh, delay, for example, having to find out and to check what uh, the mutation is in the family if it's not already known, if there's somebody affected from whom a blood test could be taken. So the, the genetic counsellor will be providing you the information and organising the test and conveying that result of the test back to you when that has been done. There may, uh, in some situations, be a concern about your, your state of mind when you're making that decision. And in some situations, you might be asked to see a psychiatrist or just to check that this is really the right thing for you at the right time and this isn't something that you're entering into for the wrong reasons or at the wrong time for you. So genetic counsellors are expert in genetics and some have particular interests and particular expertise. So, for example, they might have particular expertise in Huntington's disease. But of course, there's such a wide range of genetic conditions that genetic counsellors may not necessarily have particular expertise in your particular disease or dementia. So they might not know much about familial Alzheimer's disease. So, quite, so in some situations, 
people may see a neurologist or a psychiatrist, when they're first thinking about the issues, what was it that's in my family? What does that mean for me? And, but only when they decide that they want to be tested would they then go to see a genetic counsellor.